Hi, my name is Cheryl Spangler, and we are starting the case study uh, for Advancement Tech Services. So um, it's important to know two things before we get deep into these videos explaining exactly what we did, how we did it, how we configured every everything to take them from an offline lead generation business to an online digital lead generation business, is what did they have before and what did we do pre pre work? So before we started doing anything, um, I looked at what they had now. And so basically what they had now was a website on Squarespace. And the reason that this is not deleted yet is because I thought it was important to show where they came from when she, and then we are going to see you know where they're at now. So they had a website on Squarespace created by the owner and pretty much wasn't really doing anything other than creating a web presence for them like, ah, I don't know what the percentage is, but a very, very large percentage of the world still has library websites. Those are websites that simply list information like a library, but they are never in a, they're never um, updated. They're not something that people can interact with and they're not refreshing with new content all the time. So they had this website and basically it had a phone number for someone to call. Um, I had a hard time when I first went to the site figuring out exactly what they do, who they serve, how they help people. Uh, I did see a blog which had some content on it but it was very vague. So um, it also had a contact us page that I realized after I tried to fill it out, I couldn't really, you know, there was like something was cut off so I couldn't actually get the contact form to submit. So this is kind of where we started and it's really good to show that within 30 days you can completely transform your entire business to a fully automated but personal and authentic machine, bringing you leads every day of the week exactly when you want to take them. And I'll show you what I mean later. So this was their website before. Now, just a, a brief, this is their website now. Um, and I'm gonna walk through absolutely everything, how and why we created it, and how each item leads to the next, and how we get digital leads. Um, okay, so to start with, before we did anything, we had to identify what the advancement tech services value ladder was. And the value ladder, if you haven't, haven't figured out your own value ladder, is when you post things and when everything's completed and you're marketing, 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 and advertising, where are you marketing and advertising? It's basically broken up into two categories. You're marketing and advertising either organically um, or through paid advertising or through partners, um, but organic or paid. Organic Partners is part of organic. Organic and paid advertising, your marketing advertising is going and you're bringing people in to do what and what are the steps and what are the upsells, what is the value ladder? So your value you provide to people at first, at first entry point, is always the smallest cost item. And in most cases, it could be your free item. And so we have a couple free products that I'll show you that I created because I wanted to provide something small where they had to give a little bit of information about themselves to get it, but it was it was a it was a very good value for them to if they implemented it would actually save them a lot of money without even having to pay for anything. So in the case of ADS, their first value ladder step is an assessment, and the assessment um, varies in price, but you know it could run anything from you know, five to seven thousand dollars assessment. You know, is somewhere between let's just say five and seven thousand dollars. But I mean, it totally varies. Depends on the company. Depends on the size. Uh, again, their target market for ADS is nonprofit organizations, healthcare, and social services. So once someone gets an assessment in their company, then they are they get a scope of work, and um, ATS then helps them decide which of these three things does the scope of work recommend first? Well, it depends on their budget, depends on the economy. So no, the next um, costly item would be cleaning up their database, cleaning up their donor database. And this could be, this is like a step up from the cost of an assessment. And sometimes this alone 
makes them, earns them, or brings in more revenue simply because they've got clean data. So the ATS is all about um, cleaning and having high levels of data integrity in order to gain more donors, more online donations, and more engagement with donors. So without going into their entire business model and just talking about how we brought them from a non-digital age to a digital age. So the next step in their value ladder, and think about this, about your own company when I'm going through this, is that they, after the database is cleaned up, they want someone to manage it. Well, they're either gonna hire inside, in-house, or they're gonna outsource it. They happen to be less expensive, more qualified, and get better results than people that are, that are in-house or, or their competitors. So for them, outsourcing is a huge, huge advantage, and they normally get, the majority of the people they talk to, they claim them as clients. So once they get someone in to give them an assessment and a scope of work, the scope of work might recommend to clean their database up. And the next step would be to get them to outsource all of their maintenance and their database, you know, their, um, their DBA work to their remote workers and consultants. And this is a monthly maintenance reoccurring fee. And so then the very next step would be if they have the money, if they have the budget, and if they um, have found ways to save money through ATS's other work with them, they would install a new system, a more robust system, one to take them five to 10 years down the road with their nonprofit organization, one that's very flexible, and one that can be have ad hoc um, development done to be able to be manipulated in any way. So a system, uh, having a system for any nonprofit organization that can handle absolutely all their needs, online donations, and be something that can be completely customized is really, really important. So if they're not ready for a new system, they can clean up and outsource their existing system and save money. But this is just, walking through the value ladder is something that I created after having discussions on the phone and it's something that you really need to think about. You need to start with something small, whether it's free or, or inexpensive, and just ask yourself, you know, what is your value ladder in your company and where are you leading people from what to what, you know? What is the most expensive thing you sell and how are people gonna get there? Because people want to be led up the ladder. They want to know what's next. They want to be told what is what else do you offer? What, how else can you help them? You know, and there's one more thing that we haven't put in here, but it's part of it, which is virtual training. So in the ATS value ladder is virtual training, and that probably falls in the category of the outsourcing because it's also a monthly uh, reoccurring revenue. Or it could be a one-time fee, like a cleanup. Anyway, so this is what we did. We identified the value ladder, and each of these things made it easier for me to create content when I was thinking about their overall strategy.